the limelight, we have to be like, okay, you know, this is something we have to go through for the rest of our lives. Uh, another thing I wanted to add was uh, women aren't seen equally to men, regardless of what color, age, race, culture, religion you are, <coughs> women aren't seen equally to men. Therefore, their rights must not be the same. Violence against women occurs usually because the male is very controlling. Males believe they have the right to control the relationship with women. Violence against women is happening worldwide, not just in America, not just in the Middle East, not just in Africa, it is worldwide. <coughs> Since the problem is worldwide, there are different traditions that are seen as acceptable. This is why fixing the problem is difficult because a lot of people think, well, hey, you know, I'm not the only man that's doing it. There might be, you know, five men walking down the street who must have hit someone down the line. I'm not saying every man in this world is completely towards violence and they hit their women or kids or whatever it is, but there are majority men that do do that just to feel that control towards that relationship. This, um, the basic idea of men having control is behind every ease of abuse no matter what country you live in. Yes? Um, you didn't put, I don't know if you put her in the slide on that, but Tina Turner and Ike Turner's relationship was like very abusive. Abuseful relationship. See, it's like not just our generation or the past generation, it's been going on for years and decades and, you know, as I've said, we, uh, rape and domestic violence were more dangerous than cancer, accidents, war. Women between the ages of 16 to 44 are the major, violence is the major cause of death. You know, we, I was shocked to read that fact. Women between the ages of 16 to 44 rather go kill themselves than having to live their life knowing that they were raped or they're in a relationship that they can't get out of because their men hit them. We live in a country which gives us the right to be free and voice our opinions out loud. We should help victimize women get back on their feet and help them move on from the scars and pain they live every day. If we, you know, we have, there's a lot of counseling services, there's a lot of, you know, shelters. If you go and you talk to that women, which I did once uh, last year, I actually met a woman that was raped not once, twice, but actually nine times. Okay, and the first thing when I met her was like, okay, why didn't you do anything by the third time, or fourth time, or fifth time, you know, why did you lead it up to nine times, you know, and then she's like, I had no one to talk to, I had no one to listen to me, and there was no one to do anything for me. So what does that tell each of us, you know, we, we haven't been in this situation, and God forbid anyone is ever in this situation, but I would want, the reason why I did this presentation is to inform y'all and to kind of persuade y'all to actually go out there, and if it's one woman, one girl, one child you can help that has been raped or ha that has been going through violence, trust me, it'll make you feel a lot better. And not only you need to see that, oh, you know, I'm helping someone, but the major thing you need to see is that whoever believes in God, God is watching how you are helping someone else who's been through that scars and bruises in life. Uh, I would like to conclude by saying the most important reality is God is there and he watches it all. Men who have done wrong will get what they deserve from God, but we should stand strong and be able to be there, encouraging women that have been through violence. Like I said, God is there. For her, for Iman, the one woman in, in Libya who stood up for herself can be the voice of the millions that have been raped. You know, it might take one out of 50 to kind of get a point across, you know, but that doesn't mean we stop trying. Um, look, going through that research of um, her, it made me realize that she's not the only woman out there in Libya that's going through this. There are several that are not even documented. There are several that no one knows about. There are just several. The only person that knows about it is their family. And I would like for all of y'all to kind of keep in touch with the current events that are going with Libya. You know, to we are in a speech class. You could always uh, implement current events to use as your speech. Uh, Mr. Hassan asked me to do this speech and I was I was glad I did because it made me not only realize that there's not violence in one country, it's all over the world, you know. 
So I hope you got something out of my presentation. And yes, you have a question? Mm -hmm. um,